entrepreneurship course. Being an entrepreneur myself, entrepreneurship is my passion and it is very close to my heart. I also would like to thank Taskin Lakani, Abdullah Mustafa, y Yasmin, as well as uh, Azad Ahmed for their roles in coordinating this dynamic course. Finally, I thank the participants for joining in and for their contribution in making a difference in the world of business and entrepreneurship. I am grateful and feel highly honored for the opportunity to participate in the Institute of Business Administration online entrepreneurship program, which is a dynamic, unique, and custom design program that helps participants rewire their cognition and develop professional and personal skills about the critical topics in entrepreneurship. I hope that through this presentation, I will make a meaning contribution to the entrepreneurial leadership and organizational development capability of the participants. In my presentation, I will keep referring to cash flow management strategies because one of the main causes of business failure is poor cash flow management strategies. So it is quite important that uh, we all understand the role of cash flow management in our businesses as entrepreneurs throughout the life stages of the business. I will also refer to the empirical work that I've done on cash flow management strategies in small and medium sized enterprises. I think we all understand that globally, small and medium sized enterprises fail at a very high rate. There is a lot of empirical work that has been done on the failure of small and medium sized enterprises. So I would like the participants, maybe if they can just um, reflect on the causes of failure of small businesses or any business, just to reflect on uh, the causes that uh, make businesses to fail. There are quite a number of them, but we can boil them down into external factors as well as internal factors. The role of external and internal factors in business failure is of essence as a result. We also understand the challenges and pain in the external business environment, which can be very hostile. So as a result, we have seen in the previous slide that we have boiled down the causes of business failure into external and internal factors. And now we're saying there is a challenge in the external business environment, which can be very hostile. So now what can business leaders do so that the businesses become sustainable, so that their businesses exist not only in the short term, but for a very long time, depending on the vision of the business. So business leaders, owners, and entrepreneurs must be prepared and adequately strengthened to identify, develop, and strengthen their internal competencies, capabilities, and skills, which will prepare them to face the hostile external business environment with confidence and success. During this presentation, we are going to touch on the historical background of the resource-based view theory. We'll also examine the concept of the resource-based view and talk about the tenets of the resource-based view, which is one of the important management and strategic theories. We'll also examine the role of ensuring that business resources, including core competencies and management, are well organized within a business or enterprise. We will examine the triangle of sustainable enterprises as a value proposition for small and medium sized enterprises to consider. We will also look at the research results from a case study of a born global firm called Digital Partners Global. Beginning with the resource based view, 
we make reference to Berger Wernerfeld, who created the resource-based view in 1984. He wrote a paper entitled A Resource-Based View of the Firm, which highlighted the strategic importance of a firm's resources on the performance of the firm. But earlier on in her theory of the growth of the firm in 1959, Edith Penrose initiated the concept of viewing firms as a broader set of resources instead of just confining them or their economic units into categories such as labor, capital, and land. So instead of looking at enterprises or businesses in terms of labor, capital, and land, Penrose started to look at firms in terms of their resources. So that laid a foundation for the work that Wernerfeld uh, did in 1984. So Penrose theorized that a combination of external and internal resources is essential for the growth of the firm. He, she also indicated that internal resources, which include management capabilities, are crucial in the development of a full understanding of the external firm growth. So in other words, before we can even begin to look externally, it's important to look internally, to, to, to look at the resources that we have internally in the organization, so that we'll be able to deal with the environment that earlier in the beginning, I indicated that uh, the, the external environment is quite hostile. So the ability of management to identify growth opportunities, despite the external environment that is hostile, opportunities that, that come with the use of resources is a growth limiting factor. So the growth and sustainability of the organization of the firm will be highly dependent on the ability of management to be able to identify growth opportunities that come with the use of resources inside the organization. If we look at what a resource is, we can say a resource is anything that could be regarded as a strength or a weakness of a given firm. So if you look at your firms, you look at your enterprises, you look at your businesses, if you identify anything that you can regard as a strength or weakness, that is a resource. According to the resource-based view theory, operations, resource capabilities, will be at least as great a factor, if not greater than the organization's market position. So Werderfeld equated the internal resources to market positions of the firm. So that is how important he viewed internal resources of the firm. So for firms to have competitive advantages and to be sustainable, business leaders should identify and characterize the types of resources the firms possess. Resources should be valuable, they should be rare, inimitable, and non-substitutable. So this, these resources need to be unique, but business leaders need to be able to identify those uh, resources internally. They should be able to identify and characterize them. So by doing that, business leaders will be able to determine if they have the right combination of resources, simply because we can have resources, but if we are not able to identify and characterize them, if we are not able to check if we have a right combination, if we've combined them in a proper way to provide us with a competitive advantage and sustainability, then the resources might not be really useful for us. Leaders of enterprises need to make use of the knowledge and capabilities that members of the enterprise have gained and developed as an internal resource. So over a period of time, members of an organization, including management, will gain some knowledge which they need to use as an internal resource. Example of such knowledge and capabilities are key cash flow management strategies and capabilities, which I referred to earlier in the presentation. They give a competitive advantage to the enterprise. So when they are combined properly, like I indicated earlier, 
these internal resources can, such as key cash flow management strategies, the ability to manage cash flow, can become a competitive advantage for the enterprise. In addition, knowledge transfer and knowledge sharing form a critical component of a business leadership as well as a organizational development. Without an embedded culture of knowledge transfer and knowledge sharing, the organization may not be able to learn, grow and remain sustainable. The business environment, we all know that it keeps changing all the time. So it's important that whatever experiences that we gain, even through this difficult time, we convert that knowledge into an internal resource, but also we share amongst ourselves as members of the business so that information does not lie with only one particular individual. It is shared and transferred throughout the organization. In the area of supply chain management, both internal and external knowledge transfer have been shown to positively influence supply chain flexibility, which is the supply chain's ability to respond and to react and change in order for the organization to meet changes in the market demand. So the internal resources concept has been used in the supply chain management to ensure that uh, the procedures or the programs that the organizations have or have developed over a long period of time, they are, they are flexible, they're able to, to, to change with the changing demands, even in terms of the terms that uh, 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 enterprises provide to, to clients. So if those are flexible enough, then the, the organization will be able to attract and keep clients, not only for now, but in the long run. In a similar manner, business leaders need to have the cap capacity as well as the ability to make use of internal and external cash flow management strategies. Business leaders also need to ensure that there is external and internal transfer of information within, which is uh, information that is transferred within the firm and information that is transferred from outside the firm. Because managerial resources are firm specific, they are specific to a particular firm. They can be used as business leaders, as entrepreneurs, we can use them as a competitive advantage and they can make a significant contribution to the firm's growth and sustainability. So if over a long period of time we develop our own managerial resources, which might, might end up being unique to our firm, which other firms may find it very difficult to imitate, then we can use that, we can convert that into a competitive advantage, which will cause our firms to be sustainable in the long run. So on this slide, uh, I'm showing the uh, company resources that are at the disposal of a firm. Once they are identified and developed, these resources can enable the firm as well as business leaders to conceive of and implement strategies to improve efficiency and effectiveness. So they can contribute to the efficiency as well as the effectiveness of running an organization. Managers must be knowledgeable about the importance of their key internal resources, including cash flow management in small and medium-sized enterprises. So those resources that have, been that have been listed on the slide, we as entrepreneurs, we can make use of them. We can develop, we can develop them into some that can, be, can cause our organization to become sustainable and competitive. Business leaders of firms that exhibit above average strategic performance are likely to have gained a sustainable competitive advantage because of the core competencies. So an organization that performs above average when compared to competitors 
that organization might have gained a sustainable competitive advantage because of its core competencies or core capabilities of key web processes. In other words, understanding our key web processes. If we identify all our key web pro processes in our businesses as entrepreneurs, then we may be able to emulate those companies that have performed above average. Core competencies distinguish a business in the marketplace as a result. Therefore, business leaders must define, cultivate, and exploit core competencies of their businesses. So each business leader or each entrepreneur must be able to identify in my organization, what are the core competencies in my organization? So I should be able as an entrepreneur to define, develop, exploit all those core competencies that are going to make my organization to become sustainable and competent, com, uh, uh, to, to, to become uh, competitive in the market environment. So the resource-based view, therefore, is an important strategic management theory. It has been tested since it was uh, formulated in 1984, having been founded on the tenants of the work that was done by Edith Penrose in 1959. So it, had, it has been used over and over again in many different settings. The resource space view examines firms in terms of their resources rather than in terms of their firm's products like I have indicated earlier. It also focuses on internal resources. So in other words, instead of perhaps complaining about external factors, there is some that we can do internally, which we can strengthen. So that is the beauty or the strength of the resource space view, because it, it focuses on internal resources. When we look at resources, we are looking at anything that is can either be tangible or intangible. So we're not only looking at something that uh, we can physically touch. It's all, it also includes, like I've indicated in the previous slides, key work processes, cash flow management processes, entrepreneurial mindset, and all those things that may not necessarily be tangible. Business leaders develop and use the static valuable resources that are heterogeneous as a source of competitive advantage in producing and delivering products and services to generate business revenue. So when we look at um, the resources, we can categorize them into static, available, as well as heterogeneous. Once we have a combination of those, then we'll be able to convert them into something that is sustainable and competitive in the market environment. So now due to the, this immobility of these resources, because they cannot be transferred from one company to another. Then companies cannot be able to replicate rivals' resources. So if we develop our own resources, which are static, available, as well as heterogeneous, then these resources are not mobile. Our computers may not be able to easily replicate them. For a firm to maintain a sustainable competitive advantage, business leaders must create these bundles of static available resources that are heterogeneous, which are available, rare, inimitable, and non-mobile. So in terms of the resource space view, when we look at our resources, when we talk about resources, we must test them. We should be able to test if these resources are available. In other words, uh, are they providing value to the business? Are they rare? Are they not really common amongst competitors in the market environment? Are they inimitable? How easy it is for other firms or competitors to duplicate them, to copy them? And are they non-mobile? Are they, 
do they only exist in our company and they remain with our company or other firms, our computers can easily duplicate them. How organizational leaders inherit or acquire or develop the organization's operations resources will over the long term therefore have a significant effect on its strategic success. So the strategic success of an organization will rely on organizational leaders on how they inherit, acquire or develop the operations resources, which include both tangible as well as intangible resources. Organizations resources, including core competencies that we have looked at earlier, and their management are therefore essential in determining profitability or growth of an organization. So if we look at how we want to grow our organizations and make them profitable, it's important that we focus on organizational resources. In most cases, when companies fail, we normally attribute failure to external factors like we've seen uh, earlier, there isn't much that we can do in terms of uh, addressing external factors, but there's a lot that we can do in terms of internal factors and controlling them. So if we can focus on our internal resources, developing them, then we will be able to, in the long run, be even able to deal with what is happening in the external environment. Examples of key internal resources that entrepreneurs and business leaders can develop and take advantage of are those that are highlighted in the, in the slide listed there, including budgeting, uh, paying off of assets, marketing. So how business leaders handle those become critical. So if they develop systems and processes of ensuring that they are able to do proper budgeting, they are able to do proper marketing. Then what, what is listed on the slide can be converted into key resources. And these resources can become valuable, rare, inimitable, and non-mobile. So it's a, a continuation of a, the continuation of the key processes that we can make use of as business leaders we can develop key web processes we can develop standard operating procedures around all those that, uh, elements that are listed uh, on on this slide so as we can see all these resources are internal so they are focusing on what we can control and business leaders can therefore control and develop them it just takes the willpower as well as commitment from the business owner to be able to have systems and processes in place to deal with budgeting, for example, to be disciplined about budgeting, not as a once-off thing, but as an ongoing process. Control of internal resources also has an impact on how business responds to external factors or how businesses are prepared to respond adequately, properly on what is happening in the external environment. So if we look at uh, the sustainability model that I spoke about earlier, it is the triangle of sustainable enterprises, which is composed of the entrepreneur or the business owner or the business leader, processes and systems as well as the professional team so if we look at the triangle of sustainable enterprises if we have as if we have entrepreneurs who have developed an experience around managing a business who keep learning and improving all the time who have a an entrepreneurial mindset. If in our enterprises we have processes and systems, and if we surround ourselves with a professional team, then we are improving our chances of being competitive and being sustainable. 
So if we look at the critical business factors, if we unpack them a bit more, we can summarize them into those seven points. Professional team, budgeting, systems and processes, payment terms and contracting. So the payment terms that we negotiate with our clients, they should be in our favor. Because if that is not the case, we'll find that we are financing organizations, but at the expense of the sustainability and competitiveness of our organization. Understanding the client procurement processes. So it's also quite critical to understand on the client side, how the client has put together its procurement processes. If I need to follow up on the invoices, who do I contact? As well as the model for cash flow management strategies. So the cash flow management strategies of an organization can be summarized into those seven key critical components. I've already indicated that uh, the triangle of sustainable enterprises is composed of the business leader or business owner, professional team, as well as process and systems. So in the next slides, we shall unpack each of these three elements of the triangle of sustainable enterprises. So this is the model in a, in a picture, which is based on the empirical uh, research study that uh, we conducted. It also shows the importance of the three components of the triangle of sustainable enterprises in the sustainability as well as competitiveness of firms especially on cash flow management strategies of enterprises later in this presentation we shall see how a born global organization capitalized on internal resources for the firm to go international we shall also examine the different internal resources that this born global firm capitalized on. Small and medium sized enterprises account for two thirds of all jobs worldwide. So that is how important SMMEs are. For example, in South Africa, they provide about 30% of employment. However, like I've indicated in the beginning, small and medium sized enterprises fail at a very high rate. And also recently, they have been hit the hardest by the COVID pandemic. So it's important that for us as entrepreneurs, we begin to look internally so that we are strengthened to deal with the hardships that are occurring in the external environment to be able to be prepared to respond appropriately. The components of the internal resources that business leaders can develop in order to become competitive and to sustain their businesses include the professional team, the visionary leadership, information system, as well as personal financial resources, how they are managed internally. So a leader should be able to make use of or take advantage of those internal resources that are listed and be able to use external professional team members who will advise the organization. Those include, for example, the accountants, lawyers, bank managers, who will be able to provide the business leader with professional advice so that the business leader will be able to take, to, to take and make use of information that is based on professional advice information that has been tested, information that is going to assist the organization to avoid pitfalls rather than the organization or the business leader relying on his or her own judgment. So it's important to get professional advice. Also the skills that um, business leaders and organizations must develop for a business to become competitive and sustainable include strategic network networking ensuring that we form strategic networks not only within our spheres or within our uh, countries but internationally and also outside our industries 
to form those strategic networks, even at times with those firms that we view as our competitors. It's important that we develop our communication skills so that we are able to negotiate with clients, with supply chain managers, so as well as also internally to be able to communicate as entrepreneurs our vision internally as well as externally. Team management, discipline leadership, as well as business experience that uh, we accumulate or gain over a period of time when we are in business. That is why in business or entrepreneurship, failure is only when I have given up. But all the time, what is traditionally regarded as failure, for me as an entrepreneur, it's something that gives me a lesson, something that can, I can learn and use further in developing the business. At the beginning of the presentation, I refer to cash flow management as one of the causes of business failure. Businesses must develop cash flow management capabilities that include key decision making about the flow of cash, negotiation skills, and staff decisions to keep the organization lean and mean. So, in other words, if we look at our organizations, we need to check if they are lean, if they are mean, if we don't have resources that are idling, resources that are not being used properly or to their full use. Business leaders also need to acquire and use previous business experience and be able to, over a long period of time, build a business cash reserve so that when there are challenges, the organization should not immediately become vulnerable. Central to successful cash flow management is financial management. Therefore, business leaders can use internal systems as well as the professional team in guiding them on financial management to seek professional advice. However, business leaders need to know what is happening in the business. As entrepreneurs, we cannot just abdicate our management and leadership roles. Even when we use professional teams, we still need to know what is happening as far as financial management and all other management issues within the organization. The professional team is a key component of the internal business resource. The business leader must be able to identify and assemble a professional team that will guide the business on various professional business management issues. The benefits of a professional team is that the business leader will make decisions that are informed by inputs from experts and professionals. Business leaders can use the information that is flowing from the professional team to put in place risk management strategies. And those strategies will assist the organization to avoid pitfalls because of the changing nature of the external environment. We have seen over the past few weeks what has been happening and what is still happening. As entrepreneurs, we need to put in place processes and systems. So this is the third component of the triangle of sustainable enterprises. As entrepreneurs, we need to put in place processes and systems for us to be able to operate our businesses. Process and systems should not be dependent on a person. The business leader must facilitate the process of developing and implementing standard operating procedures and be able to communicate those procedures for each of the key work processes that we would have identified in the organization. The standard operating procedures include tracking, monitoring, evaluation, and reporting tools so that there is continuous learning and improvement in the organization. So we need to constantly learn, even from what is traditionally known as failure, we need to learn from that, develop systems, and we keep refining those processes and systems so that the organization 
or the enterprise is not dependent on a person, but it's dependent, it's dependent on the systems and processes that are there. The use of the resource-based view includes small retailers who have used it to create competitive advantage and improve performance. In one of the studies, brand identity, for example, and social capital were found to be non-economic resources, which may help small retailers to compete increasingly and increase their competitiveness in the environment. So those two, that is uh, the social capital as well as brand identity, they may sound as not so important, but research has shown that in the retail industry, they have been used as an important source of competitive advantage as well as sustainability of enterprises. In addition, brand identity was also seen as an important factor, regardless of the environment or the external environment. Regardless of what was happening in the external environment, brand identity. So once clients associate with a particular brand, then they stick with the brand, provided the service is of quality as expected. On the other hand, social capital emerged as a resource that was used more in hostile environments. So social capital was used as a resource that was uh, important despite the environment that was hostile. The concept of the resource-based view has been shown to be central to the success of the early internalization phenomenon observed in the born global startups, high technology startups, and international new ventures. This was also observed in a single case study that I referred to earlier in this uh, presentation in a high tech firm called Digital Partners Global, which is based in Medellin. The results of the case study showed that organizational capabilities based on intellectual capital are crucial for the development of a born global, an organization that right from the beginning goes international. Therefore, capabilities such as entrepreneurship, global vision, internationally, international market knowledge, learning management, IT capabilities, technological innovation, collaborative work, networks, and customer orientation are recurrent and responsible for ensuring that organizations become competitive and they are all internal resources. They are all central to management, how management has developed all those internal resources which are intangible. The founder of the Digital Partners Global developed a business strategy for social commerce, which was a result of constant learning management. So whatever the founder learned, he kept improving on it and coming up with new ways of doing things. So it was a result, the strategy that he came up with was based on his constant learning management, knowledge that is accumulated, which he later integrated and used in growing or taking the business internationally within a period of two years of starting the organization. In addition, he was always under self-training, reading and studying specialized magazines, newsletters, forums. So he was constantly studying, learning all the time. At the end of 2008, the founder of Digital Partners Global then associated with somebody that he had studied with at college. As a result, they were able to take this organization, that is the Digital Partners Global internationally, 
And as a result, they started providing services to big companies like Google. In 2009, they broadened their international markets to Singapore, Spain, as well as Mexico. By 2015, they had accumulated and gathered reputation. So they had built a brand by working with over 100 customers in 11 different markets with big companies like Microsoft. So because of his continuous learning, training, developing himself, he was able to take the company internationally and also by providing superior service, he was able to build a brand that was recognized internationally. So what business leaders can do to develop their competitive advantage and become sustainable include those points listed, instituting key business practices, leaders of SSMEs could find the concept of the resource-based view and the triangle of sustainable enterprises beneficial as they design their cash flow management strategies. So if they use the triangle of sustainable enterprises in the design of their cash flow management strategies, they may benefit and make the businesses to become sustainable and competitive in the market environment. In addition, the sustainability of small and medium-sized enterprises is critical in the fight against unemployment and poverty and the economic growth of countries. So all globally, we know that we are dependent mainly on small and medium-sized enterprises, especially during the recession and also especially during the time when companies are retrenching. So that is the continuation of the application of the resource-based view to small and medium-sized enterprises, application of knowledge of leaders in understanding and management of cash flow management. The success of Born Global is therefore due to some key intangible resources and organizational cap cap capacities. So in other words, Born Global's firms that right from their inception, they go international. Their, their success is not dependent on external environments, but it's dependent on the internal resources, how they have harnessed internal resources, just like we've seen with the, the digital partners uh, global uh, firm. Those are some of the examples of uh, internal resources. I'm not going to through, uh, go through all of those, but there are examples of uh, internal resources that are at the disposal of us as entrepreneurs. Scholars have also concluded that Bond Global School internationalized right from their inception or early in their years of formation and stay opera operational, basically because of internal resources as well as managerial commitment. So the emphasis, even in the triangle of, uh, triangle of sustainable enterprises, centers around the leader or leadership or the business owner. The resource-based view is one of the theoretical perspectives that permits such inner analysis, which is a set of, which includes a set analysis of the set of tangible as well as intangible capabilities of a firm as, as, as assets within the organization. So that is um, how Digital Partners Group harnessed the internal resources, which in their case included intellectual cap uh, cap uh, capital, as well as organizational capabilities to be able to go international. Business leaders can use the resource based view and the triangle of sustainable enterprises to improve their capabilities to design develop, implement, and document cash flow management strategies. The result will be the achievement and sustainability of the organization, and of course, contributing to the economy of the country. It is therefore important that small business owners recognize the value of non-monetary resources for the business to leverage on them to improve performance. So instead of only focusing on monetary resources 
equipment and so on. It's important that we also look at non-monetary resources and develop and strengthen those because we're able to control them. International business community and global stakeholders therefore need to collaborate and join forces to promote leadership and continue to conduct and accelerate research on various fields that impact on small and medium-sized enterprises. So around areas of leadership development, coaching and systems and so on, it's important that there is that international collaboration. So whatever phase of development your business is at, it's important that as an, as an entrepreneur, you collaborate with international and global communities to develop and strengthen your internal resources. I do hope that you will be able to use this information to develop what you've already learned in the module on the entrepreneurial mindset and its various aspects along with the effectuation model. I also hope you will incorporate and strengthen your internal resources and use them as a source for sustainability and competitive advantage as you continue to work on your prospective business ideas or to grow your business.